Students across the world have been learning from home since March 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. At Franklin Learning Center in Philadelphia, we're seeing the effects of virtual learning set in as the school year comes to a close. School schedules are changing left and right. Students are rushing to complete assignments as grades close for the summer, and graduation celebrations are still largely a question mark. It's been extremely frustrating. My house is pretty big, so for the Wi-Fi to extend around my entire house, or at least the back of my house, is a struggle. So it's like making me tardy and absent from my classes, and it's just like this is going on my record, and I can't even do anything about it. So. This school year has been a roller coaster for not just students, but also teachers and staff. At The Flash FOC, we wanted to take a broader look at the impact the virus has had on our school experience. We start with Principal Nicole Lee, who was looking forward to welcoming students back into the building. It's important, one, if you would look at our failure rate, um, that would tell you that um, many children are struggling in this virtual environment and um, we're able to support students better uh, in a face-to-face -face environment. Uh, you know, I, this just doesn't work for everyone. We are missing a lot of instructional time in this virtual world. So I would definitely say uh, children need to return to school so that they can benefit from a, a different form of instruction, a more engaging form of instruction. COVID has definitely changed what path I want to go down later in life. My plans were even to go to college, but living in unprecedented times like these showed me that I have to stop planning for the future based off of the comfort I have now in the present. Of course, when you have no motivation to go to online school, you throw your plans for college out the window. But after thinking about it, that's not the mindset I want to be in if I ever hope to live out my dreams. As the debate over statewide vaccination has continued, many schools have been forced to wait to reopen their doors. We talked to history teacher Amy Lee about how vaccines are historically known in the past to affect societies and how it shaped their future. In general, um, getting vaccinations out to people, you have one or the other, right? Lots of people who really want to take it and other people who are skeptical of it. And I think that that's something that has been a consistency throughout time. Um, we, we've seen it in the past with the polio vaccine and, and other vaccines as well. Um, people just being concerned of putting something in their body that there might be medical problems that could come from it. Throughout the pandemic, there has been a wealth of misinformation being circulated around the COVID-19 vaccines. Some of the more notable conspiracies are that there is a 5G chip inside the vaccine. We talked to medical assisting teacher Honey Polis Bodin about the truth surrounding vaccines. You know, I guess conspiracies, I guess that the, they're microchipping and other kinds of nonsense like that. I mean, I don't want to put anybody down, but it's just misinformation. It's hard for me to read that stuff because not only am I an educator, but I'm a nurse. So it's upsetting when I read that stuff, so I try not to read too much of it. The biggest argument I hear, I hear this a lot when people talk about the flu vaccine. So what they say is that you get the flu from the flu vaccine, which is not possible because they're not giving you the flu virus. If vaccines don't actually make you sick, then you might ask why people are reporting symptoms after receiving the vaccine. That's completely normal, Miss Honey explains. But sometimes when people get Vaccines, they don't feel so good. It's not because they're actually sick, but their body thinks they're sick. So the body is producing chemicals to fight the infection. And sometimes these chemicals do things like increase inflammation that make us feel yucky. Teachers in the Philadelphia School District were offered the vaccine through the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia beginning on February 17th, just in time for hybrid learning schedules to begin. The CDC has made vaccinations available to all children as young as 12. Here are some stories from the FOC community about why they chose to get vaccinated. As someone who was suffering due to COVID-19, I was elated to hear that vaccines were finally being distributed amongst the general public. And the process was very easy, and I'm glad that I can be a part of the solution. So uh, I think, you know, the fact that uh, every teacher, uh, administrator and school employee is being offered the opportunity to take 
the uh, vaccination, I think, is important in a way of us welcoming uh, our students back to school. At Franklin Learning Center and across the district, COVID protocols are enforced for teachers and students inside the building. When in a classroom, masks are mandatory and hand sanitizers and wipes are to be used before and after class to clean the space around you. When walking through the school building, hallways will be separated with tape and people have to walk on the right side of the hallway. There will be posters all around the school teaching the steps of safety protocols and how to use the bathroom. In terms of precautions taken before the pandemic, um, it, like in terms of this, there, I, there weren't any real precautions. You know, we just came to school every day. We did what we did. And, you know, I mean, I think we got more, we definitely got more hand sanitizer machines around the building now. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's totally, I personally, I would say this is totally different than it was before uh, we left um, for the pandemic. So totally different. As the city of Philadelphia slowly reopens, we are aware that there will be changes for the next school year following the rollout of vaccines and any new protocols released by the CDC. Well, we had a lot of social movements this past year in general. Um, as it comes to the pandemic specifically, I think a social movement in just caring about your neighbor, that's, that's the thing about pandemics, right? You have to depend on your neighbor, right? You have to depend that they are taking proper precautions. And I think that that's hard for us, especially in America, where we're very individualistic, right? So if there's a social movement, maybe in that, in trying to recognize, you know, we're all in this together and that the only way we'll come out of it is if we're together. Flash believes that if everyone in our school community does their part to stay safe from the COVID-19 pandemic, we look forward to a safe and much anticipated return to school in the fall. When the pandemic is over, I can't wait to be able to see my friends again and to not stall or be afraid because you may never know when you get that opportunity again. You may never know when another pandemic can arise and you may never know how long it'll be until you get that opportunity again. This has been Omar Mutman from The Flash FLC and WHYY Media Labs.